Welcome to the TT for T News. I'm Jeff Burnett. I'm Ann Feldman. And I'm Jeanette Carlson. And we are the, the Tech, Tech Trio. Trio. What an exciting time to be part of Bellevue Public Schools. Oh yeah. Oh man, this is a big time. <laughs> we are now moving forward with our technology implementation plan for the next few years. But what does that mean? What does that mean for you teachers and you students out there in Bellevue Public Schools? Well, a lot. Let me tell you, number one on the agenda, as you saw in Greg Botker's email and heard Dr. Rippey mention at the All Staff In Service on February 20th, is that all teachers will be receiving a new 13-inch MacBook Air. Yeah! Yes! And it's before Woo! they leave for summer. That's They're going to have those in their hands and ready to use. And second is the implementation of more iPads into our schools. Ooh. That is coming next fall. That is so on. exciting. Now, so excited. That is exciting. Now, and some of you teachers may start to get a little worried, like, what does this mean for me? And what do I do with all these devices as my students get more devices? Well, and what, what, what's going to happen here? Not to worry, our district is investing in you. We are going to provide you six days of foundational training Ouch. in all things blended learning and Apple and iOS. It's going to be fantastic. And then you get one of us, a human, to be right there by your side as you start to implement those iPads in your classroom. So fear not, this is going to be absolutely the journey of our teaching careers. We're going to love this. It's awesome. It's going to it be is. wonderful. It's so is. exciting. The best is yet to come. Do you have a burning question? I might have an answer. It's time to ask Anne. So, so many of our teachers out there are, are utilizing Google Chrome and for their internet browser. Good job, good and job, so good job, good job. I think apply. that what would benefit them and as well as me is give us some tips or at least two cool little tricks within Google Chrome that will help us become more efficient and just help our, our workflow in Google Chrome. Ooh, two, that's fun. Let's see. I have one. You'll love this. I know you will. I'm excited to share with you two of my all-time favorite Chrome tips. First of all, have you ever found yourself on your computer and need to sign into another Google account? Or perhaps you need to borrow a colleague's machine and sign into your materials. Here's the solution for you. Just go up to File and go Incognito. So choose New Incognito Window and it will pull up an Incognito Browser tab. And you can go ahead and sign into another Google account or your own Google account. What's fabulous is when you close out of that Incognito Browser window, all the things that you just were in are signed out of, so you don't have to worry that you've left your password onto your colleague's machine. It's just fantastic. Give it a try. And my second favorite tip goes along with your tabs across the top. So two little tab tips. One, if you go onto any tab, you can secondary click and choose duplicate. That's a handy feature, especially if you're creating content. The other thing you can do is let's say you've closed your tabs. So I'm gonna close right on out of that. Now let's say I want it back. All you do again is secondary click and say reopen a closed tab and boom, here comes that tab back. How handy is that? And those were two fantastic tips. Oh, I'm so glad you love them. Absolutely. I can see a lot of ways that teachers might use those and ways that I use that incognito window all the time to be in two places. And how quick is it to just duplicate a tab in Chrome? So fast. Fantastic. We like time savers and those are two great time savers. Thanks for sharing, ah! Anne. Oh, thank you for asking. Thanks, Anne. Did you hear that? That means it's time for my halftime highlight. For this week's episode, we're going to head on over to Bellevue East High School and check in on Chelsea Hoagland and Tina Holbrook. We are also going to swing on over to Mission Middle School and check in on Terry Sorensen. These three teachers are going to share how they use Class Kick in the classroom. Class Kick is an app that allows students to work on their assignments on their iPad or their laptop while at the same time, the teacher can view all student work on his or her device while providing powerful real-time feedback. 
we use Classic to review concepts, um, to differentiate instruction. I can work one on one with kids. And we also use it to introduce instructions or introduce new concepts into the classroom. With Class Kick, you can individualize a lot more. You can work with individual students when other students don't even know who's getting the help, who's not getting the help. Um, you're able to uh, work individually with them. You're able to send them different problems. You're able to see exactly what they're doing when they're doing it um, at the exact same time. So it used to be where you just stand up in front and teach and then hand them a worksheet and tell them to get working and you didn't really know what they were doing or where they were making their mistakes. But now you're able to see it right away. You're able to catch a lot of their mistakes before they even head home. Um, you're able to help them individually. You're able to, without even, you can work with a small group of students but still be working with other students across the room um, through the iPad and through technology. I made a visit to high school and I got to see what they were doing using an app called Class Kick. And I kind of I sat around and I thought, okay, I can I can do something with like this, and it started making sense. The workflow started <laughs> making sense to me using Class Kick. Uh, every day the kids come in, there's a code on the board, and they start working. Um, the first slide, if they had homework the day before, they're able to grade it. Then they go on to the next slide. If it's the first day of that topic. Uh, there's a vocab video, and I write in there and I talk in there, and it doesn't take long to make those. Uh, and then there's usually another video in there that has examples uh, for the kids to work. And then at the end, they get homework over the topic. And I'm able on Class Kick to uh, see their work. I can see what they're doing, I can see what kids are doing the work, what kids aren't doing the work, where they're struggling. I can pop in the screen and help them. But it's actually a lot cooler than that. They can help each other. My uh, In a lot of my classes, I'm just kind of an observer a lot, a lot of the time now. I'm sitting at one of the tables, and they'll help each other. They're like, no, no, I've got this, Mr. Swanson. I'll take care of it. I'll help them. Um, and it just, it kind of, the workflow is amazing. Uh, the class is not centered on me anymore. It's centered on them. It's centered on, on their learning. It's at their pace. Um, I'll have kids that finish the, to finish it way earlier, get the homework done. I'll have kids that take a little bit longer to get it finished. Uh, if a kid's absent, they're able to get the codes from me or get it from Schoology now, actually, and they can catch up on it. I'm right there with them teaching and helping and working at home as if I were here in the classroom with them. Uh, so again, it's uh, with Class Kick, with Explain Everything, with the iPads, uh, it has completely changed the workflow in my classroom where it's not just me anymore. Uh, it's them the way it should be. It's that time of our episode for Jeff's Flying High Shoutouts. This is the part of our episode where we highlight awesome things happening in Bellevue Public Schools by staff and students. This week, we'll travel over to Logan Fontenelle Middle School to learn about their second annual school-wide Hour of Code Week that got the entire school coding. Let's check it out. The Hour of Code was created in 2013 by two brothers, Ali and Harvey Partovi, who created Code.org with the vision of exposing every student in every school to computer science. The Hour of Code has grown dramatically the last few years and hundreds of millions of students have experienced coding. Teachers and staff throughout Bellevue Public Schools have taken part in this effort to expose more students to coding. One of the schools in our district that is leading the way when it comes to the Hour of Code is Logan Fontenelle. Led by their building tech coordinator, Santa Walters, the school provides an opportunity for every student to participate in coding during their week-long Hour of Code event. This year, it took place the week of January 23rd to the 27th. So, as far as numbers, we have over 400 people, or 400 students in the school. We had over 300, about 308, actually complete an Hour of Code certificate during one day of our Hour of Code week. One of the coolest parts of this week-long event was the teamwork it required from both staff and students. A group of students were responsible for leading and assisting fellow students throughout the week when it came to accessing the Hour of Code resources and helping with any technical issues that may arise. Four staff members also stepped up to volunteer and assist Santa in organizing their team's day of coding. Here is one of them, Roger Yeager, talking about what he saw that week from his students. Now, when we first got the students into the Hour of Code, a whole lot of them thought, oh man, we don't want to do this, i got study to all to do, I've got work that I need to be doing. But once they actually sat down and started looking at the options for Hour of Code, they started to get a little bit more interested. And once they actually started doing the Hour of Code, then it was excitement all the way around. There was a whole lot of buzz about, oh look at this, and look what my club's doing, oh look what I've got this thing doing. So it was just neat to see the engagement. Uh, they didn't think that they could, but once they actually sat down and started working with it, 
they realize that, you know, this isn't that bad. This isn't that hard. It is something I can do. And then on Friday, we had a massive celebration where I invited in some computer programmers from uh, CGI, which is a local computer programming, uh, pr uh, computer software company here in Omaha. They brought in representatives uh, from all over the world to talk to us about what their jobs were like. Um, we had a Q&A where the kids could answer, just go and ask questions. I think this is a unique opportunity for our students to code, especially since we don't have a coding curriculum in the middle school. But right now, as of right now, 308 of Logan Middle School students have coding experience. So hopefully that'll open doors for them later. Test, test, testing. Welcome to the TT for T News. And why are we doing this? She's not here. Because when she gets here, we're going to be able to roll. Going, how do we say that? What do we say? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Welcome to the TT for T News. I'm Jeff Burnett. I'm Jeanette Carlson. And she's Ann Felton. Where is she, though? I don't know. Welcome to the TT for T News. I'm Jeff Burnett. I'm Jeanette Carlson. And we are the Tech, Tech Trio. Trio. So you're going to see more iPads in the classroom next year. How awesome is that? But the question you might be having as teachers is, what do we do with these devices? How do I use them? How do I integrate them? What do you think, Ann? That's awesome. Right. Yes. Yeah. Great point, Ann. Mm -hmm. That's going to be so important. Great. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're Like she said, we're investing in you as teachers, not just the devices in this district. And that's so important. We will be there yeah. for you. Hi, Ann Felton. Welcome to the TT for T News. I'm Jeff Burnett. I'm Ann Feltman. And I'm Jeanette Carlson. And we are the, the Tech, Tech Trio. Trio. Wow. I mean, we are on. Wow.